Uh, I'm back from my four month hiatus again. Oh, you're probably wondering, Mr. Zwer, where were you all this time? If you were guessing, working hard on Call of Mini to bring all you guys some great new decomp and recomps, you would be wrong. Nope, after my last Call of Mini stream, I ported it to a better version of Asset Ripper. I figured out why a few bugs were happening, and then I got bored. The burnout is wearing off though because I'm working on a launcher for decomp and recomp right now. Well, not right right now, but, you know, right now. <clears throat> anyway, the answer to where I've been other than that is, first of all, Pixel Gun Nexus. Pretty cool Pixel Gun mod. Lots of cool new stuff in that one. Check out the official YouTube channel for it, link in the description, if you want more information on it. But I didn't work on that a whole lot after I went on a trip with my friends for 10 days. Some of you guys may know Machine Gamer, then my other friend and the guy I'm working for, Squiddy, and also I went with Calaminify, but yeah, that was fun. And when I got back, I started working on the subject of today's video, and also playing a lot of Risk of Rain. Oh, no. Help out! The Bug Heroes model format. Forsaken Media Binary, or Forsaken Media Binary 2, or Unison Mo just, just Forsaken Media Models in general, which by the way is a pretty based and red-pilled company, you know? Speaking of which, let's just get into looking at them and all the things I found about them, and how it's cool, and they're cool, and you can look at them, and then I'll- yeah, okay, alright, let's go. Okay, the first and most interesting thing is unused termite enemy. According to Jamie, he would dig ant holes, but he has the power to build and dig, so I wonder if he could maybe make turrets? He said he had no idea why he wasn't in the game to begin with, so guess that's just gonna remain a mystery unless any three of the other brothers can tell me otherwise. And also for fun, here's every single enemy in the entire game. Up here we got the flea, I don't know why he's up here really, or for me ants all the way down here. And now he's all the way over there, okay. Including unused guy right here. Okay, they're over here, but what is that? And here's a bunch of hero stuff that I'm too lazy to go through all of it because their legs are separated. I'm gonna see how many it takes to lag the CPU. Okay, still running 60 FPS. Despite all this happening here, here's me trying and failing to make sense of this whole layout. So uh, in the front yard, we got the, you know, we got the garden, and then we got the kitchen, and then over here we got the office, bathroom, living room, playroom, up here is the attic, back here is the yard, which leads to the picnic, and then the pond, and then over here is the tree coliseum, and then you can drive your back cold car over here to a uh, unnamed restaurant. Oh wait, wait, maybe it is named. Uh, I guess not. Yeah, so that's uh, that's the real canon layout of the house, definitely. Also gotta love how the guns are just a block of M16 texture. But yeah, that's most of the interesting stuff from Bug Heroes 1. There's obviously still the NPCs, the objects, some more of the turrets, but yeah, that's about it. Now, moving on to Bug Heroes Quest, there's something I wanna do. So right here is the level select, the top-down thing from which you select your level. I want to take this and make the two scale maps. Okay, I got about this far in before I realized I'd literally have to edit this in Blender, because... So, <laughs> yeah, the garage looks pretty cool. I should probably... The walls should probably be baked though, and I could not figure out how to get the bathroom to be correct, and of course the mirror is actually a mirror, so uh, that means more blender editing I'd have to do, and blah 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 blah. And here's some cool NPCs. To be honest, I, I, wanna, I want a mod where I can play as the skill master. And then uh, here's the beetle NPC, here's the old ant, and uh, here's a toad lord, which kind of weird that it's an NPC and not an enemy. It's kind of funny how Bug Heroes Quest is quite literally just a modded version of Bug Heroes 1, and that is very evident to me now. So now is the part where I go finish the FMB2 animations and show you Bug Heroes 2 stuff. Okay, it's a week later. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how the animation system works, but I never figured it out, so instead I just supported Bug Heroes Tower Defense, and we're just gonna go through the static models. Something cool about Bug Heroes 2 is it has light maps, so it looks pretty nice. It's kind of funny how few props they use. They use these cans and these pencils a lot. And then here's the living room, which you can see leads back into the kitchen, despite the couches being here. So, I mean, the color channel says 
which texture it should be using, but I don't feel like writing a custom shader for that right now. But yeah, this one's a much more interesting map since it's not just the same props again. I mean, except for these, but I'm not sure what this is supposed to be. I mean, it kind of looks like fences, but I don't really know because this is just like a cube. And for some reason, this leads... I don't really know. <laughs> Something cool I noticed was, if you look on the flea, for example, they don't have multiple models for the flea because they share a lot of animations. So say you just wanted the normal flea, for example, you would just disable all this. And there you go, you got the normal flea now. Something I never noticed about this guy is he's actually like stitched up and he's got some of this like cloth material. Also you can disable the mushrooms and he doesn't have another eye. And this eye is actually just an inverted normal eye. And a uh, close up look tells you how um, compressed these textures are. And unlike with Bug Heroes 1 where there's a model for every single food stash level, these are just sub-models. So if you just disable all the levels... Also still not sure why this guy causes you to uh, crash on iOS. Kinda funny how you can literally just go in his mouth. Also another interesting factoid, the mercenary camp is actually light mapped. And here's the biggest model in the game doesn't really look like it but this because of the animation data and how inefficient it was stored this is 14 megabytes i mean obviously i can't play the animations but so there was some interesting things in bug heroes 2 and i might be able to find more interesting things if i get the animations working but i'm just gonna move on to bug heroes tower defense and i'm basically going into this one blind the only things i've tried are the neighborhood here which is pretty cool to see and pool which i haven't played the game long enough to know what this even does something interesting i did find though this is using literally just a color palette now you may think oh wow that's that's a really clever solution to solid colors because you don't need an atlas or every single thing and i'd be inclined to agree with you if vertex colors didn't exist and weren't already in their engine so i'm kind of confused so here's the office ground this whole place and then here are the items there's also strangely a lot more model names like this would be enemy slug wouldn't it instead of just slug it's a completely different art style <laughs> so they just left basically all the bh2 files in there just like they did with Quest in Bug Heroes 1. Guess they never learned their lesson, huh? What? That was not what I was expecting when I looked at Scorpion. Wait, it just dawned on me. There's no Scorpion in Bug Heroes 2. How did I just now realize that? You can see Jamie's really starting to refine his art style, but I kind of like the more archaic designs of Bug Heroes 2. One thing I'm glad they really uh, improved on is the weapon design, because the weapon design of Bug Heroes 1 was, to put it frank, terrible. And then Bug Heroes 2, you can not really tell what was what. But this, this looks like an actual gun. This, this looks good. Except the fact that there's two clips and one is sticking out of the side, just not even talk about that. But I do think it was kind of worrying that the first game they had literally had first person shooting with gun models. So I'm not sure what they were cooking with the Bug Heroes guns, but I haven't played Bug Heroes Tower Defense enough to know what's unused and what isn't. Soon, this tool will be releasing for FMB and FMB2, FMB being able to load Bug Heroes 1 and Quest models, and FMB2 being able to load Bug Heroes 2 and Bug Heroes Tower Defense models. There'll be an explanation for how to use it, and obviously you're gonna need a copy of the game yourself, which I'm not gonna give out, because I don't think the devs would enjoy me doing that. I don't know when I'm gonna release it, but I will at some point, and then you guys can just go crazy with it. But this is where my investigation ends, for now at least. I'll probably be back to look at other Forsaken Media games, and I also want to see if I can find anything interesting in Bug Heroes 1 1.0, but my current loading code doesn't work with it, so that's it for now. Squad is next. For real this time. Bye.